Welcome to our sampling video, brought to you by EDNA Frontiers at Curtin University, Perth, Western Australia. Here we will describe the basics of sampling water and sediment for environmental DNA analysis. In this video, we'll take you through the physical collection of samples, and in the next linked video, we'll cover how to effectively filter water samples onto membranes prior to sending them to us. Firstly, before you start, make sure you have these things on hand. The standard operating protocol, a sampling container and marker, some gloves, bleach tablets for cleaning common equipment, and a large tub. Also include an esky with ice or ice bricks for sample storage. So to begin, start by putting on a pair of gloves. You'll find it easier to start with two pairs of gloves. As your hands get wet, changing gloves can be difficult, but a glove on glove is less adhesive. Open the bleach tablet container and place four or more tablets into a large tub of water filled with approximately five litres of clean tap water and mix to dissolve the tablets. Next, take the sample containers, the marker, and label them with an informative site name, replicate number, and date of collection. To avoid contamination and confusion, labels should be on the side of the container and on the lid. Assess your sampling site and evaluate which direction the general movement of water is going. In this case, it's moving slowly from left to right. With your labelled container and lid, enter the sampling site and fill the container approximately half full upstream of yourself. To make sure the container is free of dust, contaminants or residual bleach, place the lid on the container and shake the vessel. Then take the lid off and dispose of the water downstream of yourself. Now you're ready to take the water sample for analysis. Again, upstream of yourself, fill the container if you will be filtering the water in the subsequent hour or so, then you can fill the water to the container's thread level, which is approximately one litre. However, if you are planning on freezing the container in water, then please remember not to fill that high. Aim for approximately three quarters full to allow the expansion of the liquid as it freezes. This is an important point as otherwise the frozen liquid will pop the lid and the ice water will be a contamination issue. Cap the container tightly and immediately place on ice. Now in the instance that you have then taken the water sample and filtered it, this section describes how then to clean and sterilise the container ready for a new sample to be taken. This may not happen at the site itself as it would depend on where you were filtering the water, but for the purposes of demonstration we're doing it here. Remove the cap and immerse the containers in the bleach solution completely. Leave this in the bleach solution for at least 15 minutes. After placing the container in the bleach, Remove the outer gloves and dispose of them. Wait for the container to sterilise in the bleach. When ready, put on a new, fresh pair of gloves. Retrieve the container from the bleach solution and shake dry. This is then ready for the next sample. Noting that you must do the container wash with site water upstream of your position, as we've covered earlier in this video. This concludes the steps for consideration when collecting water samples. We'll now switch over to the collection of sediment samples. For sediment collections, ensure you have the protocol, your collection tube, a spatula, a marker pen, and a small strip of parafilm to seal the tube with, and some gloves. You should also have an esky with ice or ice bricks for sample storage. Start with labelling your tube, noting a site name, replicate number, and date of collection. To sample, take your label tube and a clean spatula. Enter the site, and again, working upstream of the water flow from where you are, Spoon the sediment into your tube. The amount of material we need is relatively small, but filling the tube to approximately half full or less is fine, as we can pulverise the whole sample and then subsample from it for analysis. These tubes that we provide have been specifically chosen as they are durable enough to withstand the metal ball bearings used in the extraction, allowing us to directly pulverise your sample. This limits cross-contamination by not requiring us to physically remove the subsample prior to the defrosting and pulverisation. Therefore, if you exchange the sediment sample tube with another of your own, it's very important to inform us, as the tubes may break in the extraction process. The tube's lid should be tight. However, to prevent any potential leakage of the liquid in the tubes, we recommend wrapping parafilm around the thread. Once you take the backing paper off the parafilm, hold one end of the plastic to the tube with a finger and then pull the other end as you stretch and wrap the film around the tube. This may run around the tube of thread a few times and then you can simply hold it onto the film to get it to stick to itself. 
Now your sediment sample is ready to be cooled or frozen before being transported to the analysis lab.